Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you very much. And the chair will be taken by the next chair. Oh, yes. Sir. Okay. Hello, everyone. And um, my name is Ludovico Baratto, and I'm happy to welcome you to the first uh, paper session, which will be about uh, echo chambers and uh, filters bubble. We are going to have uh, three presentations, and I invite you all to ask your questions online or to use the microphone here in the middle. So the first presentation will be for the paper entitled An Audit of Misinformation Filter Bubbles on YouTube, Bubble Busting and the Recent Behavior Changes, and will be presented by Branislav Pechel. Branislav, the floor is yours. OK, thank you. OK, so hi, I'm Branislav Pechel. I'm a PhD student and the at the Kempelan Institute of Intelligent Technologies in Bratislava. And where we, I will talk a bit about our paper where we investigated the misinformation filter bubbles on YouTube. So, large social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube contribute to the spread of misinformation online. This mainly happens due to the personalization present on them, which in combination with user-generated content tends to enclose users in the misinformation filter bubbles. These misinformation filter bubbles are very similar to content filter bubbles, with a difference that the majority of content suggestions are false information. The companies are aware of this problem and are committing to fighting misinformation on their platforms. For example, Facebook is working to stop misinformation and false news by making the reporting easier. YouTube blocks all content regarding medical misinformation on its platform and Google addresses disinformation across all products by supporting fact-checkers. In addition, the European Union released a code of practice on disinformation, which includes all major media platforms. The main idea, main idea behind it is that the companies commit to the fight and then produce annual self-assessment reports on how they are doing in this fight. However, there is a problem with this approach, and that is that the self-assessment reports are not transparent enough as there is no way to validate them. To overcome this problem, we can use social media black box audits where users, or bots simulating users, follow a simple scenario. Following this scenario, they provide some kind of implicit or explicit feedback to the platform, which, reduces, which returns some kind of recommendations or other adaptations back. Then, by evaluating these adaptations, we can do an independent and non-obtrusive investigation of adaptive systems. Such audits are already, already being used. For example, YouTube is often researched as a case, as, what, as it was previously uh, identified as a source of large, inf uh, as a source of significant amount of misinformation online. Some of the previous findings include that YouTube progressively leads users to more and more problematic content. In addition, once users get to this problematic content, the recommendations tend to keep them there. On the other hand, YouTube actively fights misinformation in some high-risk uh, areas, such as medicine or healthcare. So, it is rather easy to get stuck in a misinformation filter bubble on YouTube. However, no study so far has investigated if it is possible to burst such a bubble. So, this is what we wanted to study. How does the filter bubble effect change once users start to actively fight against it, in our case, by watching debunking videos. In addition, as YouTube uh, is already actively fighting against misinformation, we wanted to investigate whether the, in the situation has changed in comparison to a reference study done about 1.5 years ago. To answer our research questions, we did an agent-based sock, sock puppeting audit when an agent follows a simple scenario. First, we do some initialization, so we log into YouTube and accept the cookies. Then, the agent tried to submerge into the misinformation filter bubble by watching 40 randomly sorted promoting videos. After each video, we save the recommendations, we visit the homepage and save the results, and we execute five queries and save results from them. Then, after hopefully creating the filter bubble, the agent tries to uh, burst it or emerge from it. 
This is done using the same steps as before, but this time with debunking videos. Then we do some cleanup, uh, such as clearing the watch history. Both the promoting and debunking videos in the single scenario are from a single misinformation topic, and we use 10 bots for each topic. And we, uh, we evaluate five topics overall. These topics are selected or drawn from the reference study to enable for comparison and include 9-11, chemtrails, flat earth, wood landing, and anti-vaccination. After running all the scenarios, we manually annotated the observed recommendations and search results, where we fo uh, focused on two main criteria, the misinformation presence in the video and the relevance to the investigated topic at hand. This resulted in a 12-point annotation scale. Using this scale, we annotated 3,000 videos, which took hundreds of person hours, which is a concern for the future. In addition, we performed an ethical evaluation of the annotation effort, as well as the experimental setup that I have presented so far. Both the dataset and the code base is publicly available and includes the code for the audit, the notebooks we used for evaluation, and the videos we have encountered in our audit. From the annotated videos, about 8% were promoting, about 21% were debunking, and the rest were neutral or not about misinformation. For evaluation, we, we are using met metrics on misinformation prevalence. More information on these are in the paper. However, the most important things right now are that the metrics, return number between the minus one and one, with lower number meaning uh, better results or less misinformative videos. So, here are some results. In comparison to the reference study, we detected no significant, no significant change in the behavior. In case of search results, we detected no change in behavior, only changes in content. For example, the anti-vaccination topic has worsened and the chemtrails topic has improved. The situation was similar in the recommendations, where we detected, again, only changes in content. Again, anti-vaccination topic has worsened, and moon landing topic has improved. As for our main research question, we determined that watching debunking videos reduces the misinformation filter bubble effect. However, the effort required varies by topic. First of all, we detected no uh, filter bubble effect in search results. In recommendations, the filter bubble effect was present, uh, most notably in 9-11 and anti-vaccination topic. Here, watching the debunking videos improved the situation across almost all topics, but again, uh, the effort uh, varied across topics. So, for the next steps, we see several challenges that prohibit audits from providing more extensive and up-to-date evaluations. First of all, Audits require extensive manual tasks which limit their, their scalability. To better scale to more topics, these tasks, these, these tasks need to be automated, such as automatic content annotations or automatic seed video selection. Secondly, the results of audits quickly become obsolete. Currently, they are done as snapshot audits and they are only applicable at the time period of the audit as platforms constantly change the content in their behavior and even user interfaces. To provide more up-to-date evaluations, we need constantly running bots, so continuous audits. This idea was introduced on uh, continuous and automatic audits, was introduced in our paper at the UMAP conference, so if you are interested in more detail, please check it out. So, just to reiterate, audits provide an independent and external scrutiny of social media misinformation behavior. In our paper, we have replicated a previous study and investigated whether the situation has improved since then. Sadly, we detected no significant change. In addition, we studied the problem of filter bubble bursting on YouTube and determined that watching debunking videos helps with the situation. We also performed a thorough ethical evaluation to minimize any unwanted effects of our audit. Last but not least, we publish the code base and the data set. As for the next steps, we argue for continuous automatic audits that should not impact the audited platforms, so should be done ethically. Dealing with misinformation is a subject of our future work, also in a SEDMO project. So if you are interested, 
we are always open for collaboration. Thank you. Thank you, Branislav. Um, there don't seem to be questions uh, coming online. Is there any question coming from the audience? If so, please uh, use the microphone in the middle of the room. I will start with a question to okay. break uh, the ice. Um, we have seen that, uh, as you highlighted, that there have been uh, no important changes, uh, but for some topics, uh, actually there was a changing and uh, of yeah. course they were the topics were related to kind of hot topics at the moment such as yeah. anti-vaccination do you think that uh, the amount of content uh, that is available online for these uh, hot topics uh, is influencing uh, this type of uh, worsening or improving uh, the type uh, of um, results that you got so the changes that uh, there were present there, they were due to the changes in the content. For example, uh, I was talking that chemtrails topic has improved, but this was because there was released a new uh, music video, uh, chemtrails over the country club, of, I don't know how it was called, and it dominated the search results. So it moved the topic to more, to more debunking or more neutral videos. Similarly, with vaccination, the problem or the change in topic were the uh, videos from USA talking about uh, vaccine, but it, wa it wasn't debunking videos or promoting videos, it was just ne neutral videos that were talking that, yeah, vaccines are coming, and, and that was all. Okay, thank you. We have some questions coming from uh, okay. online, and uh, the first of them uh, is, uh, I'm wondering if you looked into social science work uh, into filter bubbles and misinformation, there is quite some work in the social sciencing and the banking uh, and filter bubble busting. So basically they're asking for a connection with social sciences. So we have looked a bit into the social sciences. We are working with social scientists in, on this project, but I cannot say much more. Okay. Uh, then uh, there's uh, one final question that uh, is asking, uh, uh, thank you very much for the talk and I greatly appreciate uh, you calling out uh, uh, the need for ethical research. However, is it uh, the most ethical to not intervene or is it rather more ethical to create interventions that reduce mis and disinformation? Can you repeat the question? Sure. Uh, uh, the question is asking if it's more ethical to not intervene or if it's more ethical to create interventions to reduce mis and disinformation. So if it's important to intervene or not, yeah? Yes. Yes, so it's important to intervene in this case because, yes, uh, the content filter bubbles or filter bubbles can be good in some cases, but in case of misinformation, they are really problematic because once you start uh, to watch misinformative videos, usually they, they go to other topics. We have seen something similar that once you started to watch I think it was 9-11 uh, misinformative videos. Then they, they got recommended other, for example, flat earth videos and anti-vaccination misinformative. So it should be addressed. Okay. Uh, then we have one final question by Francesco Ricci, who is asking about the practical applicability of this idea. Can you design agents that will be able to bust the misinformation that I'm exposed to? The question is uh, if it's possible to design agents that will be able to bust the misinformation that one person can be exposed to. So it's like, is this idea actually applicable in practice? So we have thought, we have thought about it, but the, the audits, the, their main uh, job is to determine whether the problem is there on the platform and inform the platform that something needs to be changed. Uh, another look can be that the using these audits to learn how the platforms are behaving and then create a tutorial or something for other users that look out here, you probably are stuck in this information filter bubble and if you want to exceed it or something or deal or do something with it, you can start doing this and give them the checklist what should be done. Okay. 
Thank you. There are more questions online, but unfortunately we run out of time and I invite you okay. to interact with them. So let's thank our speaker again. <laughs> and uh, we move to our second paper presentation, which will be by Tim Donkers, who will be presenting us his paper entitled The Dual Echo Chamber, Modeling Social Media Polarization for Interventional Recommending. Team, the floor is yours. Uh, hello.